Next question. Yeah. So, so come on, Steve. What do you want to know? I want to be honest. What's the new stuff on the? Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Yes, I have got Bonnie and Clyde here again. Yeah, the two <laughs> Mr. Memphises. Anyway, what a madhouse this is going to be. And don't forget, folks, it's not my fault, it's them. So please, if they behave, it's nothing to do with me. They only guess mm -hmm. the mine. Um, <clears throat> let's, go for, let's go to you, Mr. Memphis, Mark Memphis. Congratulations yeah. on your engagement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are you looking forward to getting married? Uh, yeah, we, we we haven't planned a day or anything. We I just thought, um, you know, it it was more about the commitment aspect of it, really, just to just to do something nice. Um, the fact that she had no, she gave me no idea about what she wanted for Christmas. That didn't help. So I thought, well, I need to, um, you know, I need to I need to give her something grand and worthwhile. And I thought, well. This could be this could be quite a thing. But it was um she had no idea it was going to happen. And um it was a doorstep engagement because I caught COVID um two or three days before Christmas. So um oh, I was in right. but I were I were planning to do it anyway. I'd already wrapped it up and everything. Um and I was going to propose on, on Christmas Day and I had to do it on my doorstep, um, socially distanced. So it was, you know, it wasn't I, quite the uh, occasion I thought. On your doorstep, were you there with a pint of milk and going, you know, darling, I'll give you a pint of milk if you marry me. No, she came, no, she came to my house because I was having to self-isolate. So I couldn't leave the house. That's so she was, um, so that, um, I'd, my, my kids came to visit me just before she came. So all I could do was open the door and, exchange gifts with people with um i had two pairs of gloves on for my kids and all we could do was high five each other um i couldn't hug them or anything like that so that was quite hard and then and then melanie came and um i passed her this huge box that i'd wrapped up and in the box i'd put like um, a length of wire so that was like it you know like running inside it and the ring was hanging off the wire and at first she couldn't see the ring so she opened this huge box off. No, that was the bomb. That was <laughs> well, yeah, that well, yeah, I suppose it was a bomb. It was, it was, um, it's quite explosive in its own little way, and yeah, so that that's how that's how we did it, right? Then. So, but see, what me and Mark wants to know is that like, you know, about when you get married and everything, you know, mm -hmm. you know, um, so how did you do it? Did you go on one knee to her? Um, if I'd have gone down on one knee, I wouldn't have got back up again. And I, and I also was aware that um, it was, you know, the whole street could have seen it if they wanted as well. So I've got houses that, that are directly opposite. You've seen them light up, Steve, um, you know, through my through my front door. So um, All I've seen is the police outside flashing. Yeah, no, I know. But anyway, <laughs> no, there was no... There was no... Um, there was no down on one knee or anything like that. It was just a case of trying to make the best of a very, very awkward situation, you know, and... Uh... Well, you know, all I can say is this, that, you know, congratulations, good luck. Thank you. Um, if you need any advice, don't come to me, because uh, I've been divorced so many times, it's unbelievable. All right? All well, I've, say... I've, got, um, I've got two divorces under my belt, and... Um, I don't intend to be a third time unlucky, you know. So, um, yeah. but I, I don't. We won't have any problems. She's a, she's a, she's a, she's a good one, as as they like to say. Oh, yeah, wish you, all, wish you all the best. All the luck in the world. Hope it goes well for you. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Yeah, we do. Is yeah, she going do. to ask you to uh, stop singing now? See, once you get married, will she put her finger down and say no more singing for you? No. No, I no. don't think so. No. no. Um, oh well. No, no. I I, she enjoys the glamour, I think, of um, 
of, of, yeah. of what we of what you and I do, Mark. I think she uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah she, she's dazzled by when bright lights. And I'm not this type of guy, Steve. As you you know me quite well, Steve. Obviously, you know what I mean. I'm not this type of guy. But there are entertainers in this business who do their gig, and then once the gig's finished, they you know they go visit other people, and you know people yeah. are waiting for them backstage and stuff like that. Oh I've yeah, never, yeah. I've yeah. never done that. I've never no, done I mean, that. But Mark, Mark does. Mark does. There's it? evidence you, of that. There's evidence well, okay. Let's that. um let's see this evidence. Well, he takes photos of himself in the changing rooms and stuff, right? That was. And he, that was... Sends a, he sends the pictures, right? He sends the pictures on his dating apps, you know. And he says, "Right tonight, I'm playing at Bradford um, Workman's Club. Come along, baby, you know." So he flashes yeah. them on there. And poor Mel, right? Poor Mel, Mark. You know, she. You know, she's in the. She's in the. In the all sipping her coke and everything. And he's in the back for this woman. It's bad. Well, it? it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, my, fr take... my friends. Sorry. <laughs> it, it was nice being engaged for for um for ten yeah. days. You know, I think she's she's probably dropped me by now, Mark. Do you think after hearing that? Well, hopefully not. Hopefully not. You know, she knows what kind of guy you are, right? Right. But if it does happen, you know, there's lots of those internet dating sites that you can join and things, and they actually give you a dis they give you a discount if you're an Elvis tribute. They actually do. And see if you do it. Uh, but see, years ago, those internet dating sites used to be like I don't know. I'm just I've never been on one, but I hear that they're like pounds <laughs> a month or something, right? If you're a guy, but women go on for free. Right, which is right. unfair, isn't it, really? But mm. if you're an Elvis tribute and you put a jumpsuit on, you get it all for free and you get your pick of the women. Only thing is, oh, yeah. they're obviously in their 70s and 80s, you know what I mean? So there'll be a, you get a free wig, too. Well, you can do. The wigs are a bit dodgy, though, Steve. I've seen some of these wigs and they're a bit dodgy. But my, my point mm. is, you go with a 70-year-old woman, right? Very lovely, yeah. but not too demanding. And as I say, and when she gets a bit tired, you can move on to another one. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I've, that's... so I've seen, no, that that's in the advert. I, I've I've not actually done that myself. I'm just saying. <laughs> he, he has done that. Anyway, it's nice <laughs> to know that, that that I've got options, really. You know. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Um, anyway, anyway instead of us kind of like you know having to go at Mister um, uh, Mark Memphis, how uh, about you, Mister Memphis, Mark? Um, what about Lisa? When, are, when are you going to get married? I'm not getting married. I'm, I'm just not the marrying kind. I just, I think it's a, you know what? I, I could be very cynical, right? Right. But see, if you look at it, I know everyone who's got married has, has ended up divorced. Everybody I know has been divorced. But it's just a piece of paper. What I mean, okay, some people think it's good and I, I really respect that. But for me personally, I think when you are with someone and you're not married, you have to keep trying all the time and be your best. It's when you're married, you let it slip a little bit and you go, "Well, I'm married now, so what's, I don't need to try so hard." And you just kind of give up, and then relationships go sour. So always keep them on their toes. Always, you know, and and marriage doesn't do that, but being with someone does, you know, because you've always got that kind of uh, if if that person doesn't treat me right, I'm off. You know what I mean? But yeah. as if you're married, it's difficult to walk away, isn't it? Mm. You know, yeah, houses so and all that, and mortgages. You two are you two are singers, on singers, right? So you can sing to your partners, can't you? Yeah, I suppose you now, could. And they don't walk away from you, do they? Every time I sing to my partner, she just tells me to bugger off. Right. Well, maybe mm. it's just singing, Steve. Can can you hear a little bit of that singing? I'd like to see maybe maybe. Yeah, a, I would. Yeah, let, let's hear some of it, and we'll, we'll tell you. We'll be honest, Mark, won't we? We don't. Yeah, put the I'll be. In. Yeah, I'll yeah. be brutally honest because there's no other yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So come on, come on, okay. come on, say it, say it. Right. Okay. Um, love me tender, love me dear, never let me go. You have made my life complete. And I love you so. It's, it's all right, you know. I mean, it's, it's probably good for karaoke. Have you ever tried karaoke? I did, but I emptied the building. You did, you did, yeah. Right. Okay. 
Yeah, to do. but I could see I could see why your wife might not be too keen on you. And mm. is the divorce papers re ready to be signed? Oh yes. Look at how about this one. Rock rock kahula, rock rock kahula. I went chilling my hips and fingertips. I feel like heaven bell. I went to my hips. Hey, baby. See, no. This is this is this is marital cruelty, as I say. I can't believe I'm participating, and I want my name to be kept out of this. You know, it's uh, yeah. Steve. That's, you that's said, bad. <laughs> you said you're going to be a judge, so you know. I've told. I've told yeah, I think. Um, I don't know what she. I can't imagine what she's done in life to deserve that. Um, well, what my wife's done in life to deserve that, I'll tell you what it is. What she's doing now is she's banging her head against the um, wall and saying, "Get me out of here! I need a mental mm. nurse." Right, okay. Well, <laughs> but there are right, obviously yeah. singing is not one of your qualities. Understand that, right? You must have other good qualities that you know that are hidden, maybe. What what would you say is your best quality? I haven't got any qualities. Have you not? No, I had all them at Christmas quality streets. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah, going to come course. up with that in a couple of seconds. You're too quick. Yes, yes. <laughs> but I'll tell yeah. you what, I did do a, a, actually I've won a competition before. Singing competition. Right. Yeah. yeah. A singing competition? Oh yes, yeah. yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, when I was away, yeah. I did, I did, honestly, I did. Yeah. See, yeah. come to think about it now, I, I think I remember your face, but you're an opportunity not with Huey Green. No, no, no. I was no. stars in your eyes. Stars in your eyes. eyes. <laughs> yes, I was in stars in your eyes. I was on with a particular person on Facebook. Yeah. Where's your wig? Right. I was doing a double act. Right. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well. So, Yes. And, um, come on. What? What happened? Well, Shirley Bassey was on before us, uh, so I lent her my wig and I've followed hers. Right. Yeah. Yes, oh, well, so... so, look, look, so anyway, you... come on. Let's put the jokes yeah. aside because right. I supposed to be interviewing you can two I, guys. Can I ask a serious question here? Yes, you can, yes. I was, no, you've been on this morning many years ago on the TV show. Oh, yes, did, I was did, on did, this morning. Yeah, yes. did you get to meet Holly Willoughby? Yes, I did, yes. And did you get to shake her hand? Yes, I did, yes. And, uh, and I is had she, a of her. The, is she as nice in person as she looks on TV? Yes. And I, oh, met, wow. and I met Amanda too. Amanda Holden? Yeah. Oh, yeah, got a nice photo of her. Oh. Have you? Oh, nice, yeah. yeah. She's small, she's small. She'd be angry. Small, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Lovely, lovely. Yeah, oh, well. I tell you. yeah, Philip Schofield. I met Philip Schofield. I met quite a lot yeah. of them. Yeah, well. Jeremy anyway, Kyle. You've, you've met Jeremy Kyle? I met Jamie Carr. Jeremy Kyle? Oh. 12 times. Wow, wow. What yeah, was the yeah. other one? The other talk show girl used to be on uh, the, 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 the dark hair girl. Trisha. What's her name again? Yeah, Trisha. Have you met her? No, yeah. no, I've never met Trisha. No, no, I've never met Trisha. No, I was um, I've I've met um, what's that guy who does the um, um, uh, lost lost families or something? What's his name? Oh, oh yes, um, uh, Alistair uh, Campbell, yeah. not Alistair Campbell. Uh, some Nicky Campbell. Uh, Nicky, Nicky Campbell, Campbell yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on one of yeah. his morning shows once. Uh, yeah, it's called Good yeah. um, Big Question. It was on a Sunday. Right. So, All right. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, what, what are you asking me questions for? Um, you know, yeah, because you're not asking us any decent questions. We just stop. Sorry, we've got, <laughs> we've got cut out there to shut you up. Yeah. Anyway, look, yeah, listen, okay. guys, listen. What I want to do tonight is this, right? Before we finish, when you and you're winding me up, what we want to do is we want a competition out of you two. So I want you to sing a song, and my audience of Quite a bit. Um, two and a half. Um, that's that's plus the wig. Um, <laughs> we can. I just want a competition. All right. So, what you sing a song? Now nah, I'm not joking. What I want you two to do is sing a song, 
And what we're going to do, we're the, I'm going to get the audience to actually, actually try to get them to kind of name that tune, name that right. song. So we've got to sing the song in an exaggerated club singer style, you mean? So yeah. they won't know what the song is and they've got to try and guess what we're singing? Yes. All right. Right. Right, uh, who's first? I'll go first. I'll go. Uh, okay, you, you go you, first, Mark. Go on, then. Oh, you, go, you go first, right? Let me see what you're like, because I'm a bit scared. Right, all right, okay. Um, okay. I don't like competitions. Oh. Okay, here's my song. And it was a big hit. Everybody knows this song. And it goes like this. That's it. <laughs> that sounds like my bloody cat out in the bloody... <laughs> That's worse than Steve. I couldn't... I, I, you know, honestly, I was going to try and sing bad one time, right? Because everywhere I go, we, we obviously do the Elvis tribute stuff and all that. And I would just love to go up on stage and just sing total crap just to see what people's reaction would be, you know? And I've always thought of doing it in a really broad Glaswegian Scottish mm. accent, you know, and just go, well, it's all for the money, two for shot, three to get ready, go, can't go, hello there. And I never really done that, you know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'd, love, so, I'd love to do that. Well, you here's know? your chance. Here's your chance, you know. You yeah, to, um, yeah, yeah. You got to skewer some song to death and... Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh my god. It could be Ladies and gentlemen, I am sorry. If you are watching this program, this will be censored. <laughs> it's like the cats have dog home. So have we got any answers, Steve? Have we got any uh any answers yes. to the to the what yes. what, what, what Go on. Well, for Mr. Memphis, we got how much is that doggy in the window? Mine. No. Mine. Also, the other one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. And yours was all shook up. Right. Okay. Well, I can confirm that I wasn't singing all shook up. And I can confirm I wasn't singing how much was that doggy in the window. It was a uh, heartbreak hotel I sang. And I was singing all by myself. All by myself. Don't Mark, wanna be Mr. sorry. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. How's, yeah. It been, how's it been going on Facebook? How's how's it been going? Uh last week, believe it or not, was the busiest week of all. Uh I had sixty-three viewers at one point and it jumped up to 75 and then you know we kind of middled out about 55 56 for the rest of the night so that's the highest viewing figures ever uh as i said i don't know if it's because i was wearing my new jacket so you have to go check check the jacket out it's giving your feedback on that jacket but everyone seems to like it it's a bit like a smoker's jacket i got it for a christmas present off liz and it's a bit like a smoker's jacket that you'd wear back in the 70s. Some of you'd maybe lounge about the house in or go to bed in. And I, 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 I just, I don't really like it. So I just hope she's not watching. Uh, I've, but I've can't... got a question for you. I've got a question for you. Janice yep. wants to know, how many, how many costumes do you have? Memphis Mark. Me? Memphis yeah. Mark, yeah. Oh, I've got about seven or eight now. Seven or eight, yeah. And Mark, yeah. how many you got? Um... <sighs> Well, I've got about uh, about seven jackets, and I've stopped wearing them because I'm sweating so profusely at the moment, and I don't know if it's um, because of you know the heating in the building or what have you. I've stopped wearing them. I'm going to have to get some some new jackets, but I've got about seven different jackets. Like I say, I usually wear the same black trousers through throughout the night. And um, and there's usually two or three shirt changes as well. So, but I, I don't wear anything particularly flashy. I must admit. Okay, and um, have you ever? Uh, this is from Memphis Mark. Have you ever been caught short on stage before? 
like we're into, like you need to go toilet or something. No, never. No, no. I'm I'm like a camel. <laughs> what you do? Wear a bag up. <laughs> no, no, I'm, <laughs> no, no, I'm, no, 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 I've never, I've never been, I've never been caught short. I must be honest, no. Mark? No, I, no, I haven't either. Um, again, I think I'm a camel as well. But yeah. Mark, did you ever hear that um infamous gag that Elvis used to say about Gatorade? Yes, when he was yeah, on stage. Yeah. It yeah, works where right. it works three times faster than water. So if I suddenly <laughs> leave the stage, <laughs> right, he had okay. to drink. He had to drink Gatorade in Vegas because it was so dry. Yeah. How, how can you drink? How can you drink a gay? Gatorade. Yeah. Gatorade. Oh, it's your proper accent, you know. Anyway, yeah. we've got another question here for you, Mister Mentus, and this is from. Oh, Carol. Oh, Carol. I love you too. Oh, Carol. You're so in love with me. Oh, Jesus. Yeah? Any... Do I get any points for that? We're no? docking points for that. Uh, I'll give you four out of ten. I'm quite generous. Four, four out of ten. Oh, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So, Carol, Carol wants to know... Power wants to know, have you ever splitted your trousers on stage? Who's the first one? Um, no, but I've split. I think I mentioned this last time we were all on together. Um, I've split a, a zip on a jumpsuit as I was putting one on. And um, and the 2001 theme had started and CC Rider had started. And I think it got to the middle of Burning Love when I came out wearing what I'd wore in the first show because I was in such a rush to put the jumpsuit on, I bust the zip. And um, I was not prepared to walk on stage with the zip right down to... This is when I wore <laughs> jumpsuits. So that, that's the most. That's the only malfunction I've had fashion-wise on you know in my singing career. Wow. That is really yeah. good. And I'm sure Mark is going to top that. No, honestly, I, I've never had any wardrobe malfunctions ever like that. Uh, but I, I don't do a lot of costume changes. All I do is change jackets. I used to have this black and gold jumpsuit. Uh, that I just hated it. It was just like a big bin bag, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> just, <laughs> just didn't like it. And I didn't want to go spend three, four thousand pounds on a decent jumpsuit because that's, that's, that's what they were at that time. And as I say, because yeah. you go you go to these clubs, you don't get real changing rooms. Really. Given like there's a toilet to get into and all that, you don't want to be spending yeah. lots of money on a decent jumpsuit. And I just thought, me personally, Mark, I, I don't suit jumpsuits. I haven't got the legs for them, and I'm too short. Yeah. I'm only five nine. I think to to wear a jumpsuit and carry it off properly, I have to be about six one, six two, maybe. You know, my personal opinion. I don't think it's right, but for me, it doesn't work. So I've just got my rock and roll jackets, black trousers, nice shoes. I've damaged my toes sometimes in shoes, uh, right. dancing and all that. I do a lot of kind of in the style of Shaken Stevens dancing and things when I dance. Oh, and, I, on uh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Like ballet, and ballet came, toes. Yeah, the ballet mm. toes, yeah. And I've came off stage and went home and changed and my, my toes were all bleeding and things, you know, and mm, so God. that's been quite mm. bad. That's the only kind of thing that's happened to me, really. Yeah. 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 Now, you're, you're totally right about the jumpsuits um, and as well, you know, I mean, I'm I'm 53 next and, you know, I think it's more, I mean, yeah, you're right about it. You've got to have the right physique. Um, but also there yeah. comes a time in a man's life when he's going to look ridiculous when he's in his late 40s onwards in a jumpsuit. And especially yeah. them that, sorry, Steve, that, that those that wear a wig, you know, they've got this mop of hair which would probably look better on somebody in their 20s or 30s, about 50 years ago, and they've got the old man's face. It's horrendous. It's a cry for help. And these people yeah. need to be sectioned. <laughs> <laughs> pulling, no, pulling no punches. <laughs> and then they, then they need um, sorting out for damaging Elvis's legacy, but that's a... Well, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, right, okay. Another uh, question. Man, yeah. you want to know... Mandy, have you ever been tracked on stage before by a woman? Ooh. I have, yes. I told you that time I get, I got to be kicked in the sore place. 
uh, because I, I had the jumpsuit on at the time. This was about oh, 15, 16 years ago or something. And I had the jumpsuit on at the time. And I was kidding on. I was stuck doing suspicious minds. And uh, I couldn't move. I said, I can't move. I can't move. And this woman came running towards me. Oh, you'll move now. And she went to go kick me. And Liz just pulled me away in time. Or I'd have been really, I'd have been a sore one. She was serious, by the way. She was the kid in one. I mean, I would That's have been... Yeah, it was. Yeah, oh, so you get you get some ruthless fans out there, I'll tell you. So uh, yeah, that's the only time I've been. You do get some bit, you know, bit funny weirdos on your Facebook, don't you? Really? Yeah, sometimes you do. Yeah, yeah. I've had I've had people that like, kind of booking me and all that, and saying, you know, I want you to come and do a show for me, and then you say, right, they just do it to talk to you, and then once you start getting the nitty gritty, you know, they they just disappear and unfriend you and you know and then they come back with new profiles with different names and still trying to talk to you i just block them all i just can't be bothered you know but uh yeah you get a few i mean the majority of people they're very nice and kind the, the comments are lovely and the genuine fans they do stick up for you when i had three as i was saying to steve and then before we came on there i had three trolls last week mark and it was one of them said uh you know, I, I don't know what this is, but this is certainly isn't Elvis. And some other guy said, I didn't get the memo. Uh, I thought you were just, just singing Elvis songs. I was singing a bit of a deal, Neil Diamond, uh, some Dean Martin, Roy Orbison, and, you know, as well as Elvis and a bit shaky. Yeah. And then, you know, so you, you just mix it up because I just don't like singing Elvis all the time. But lots of rock and roll stuff and energetic mm. songs, you know. And then some other guy said, uh, it's the worst Elvis tribute he's ever seen. I'm like, oh well. So what do you say to oh, that? Well, you know, just, well, yeah. d- just 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 send them to me and Steve. I'm sure that we could uh, <laughs> divert them to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's a, do you not think that the Facebook thing though? It's it's pretty much politics. There's politics involved in it. Yeah. It's not about how 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 hard you work or or how good you are or whatever. You know, it's just that it's, if your face fits, you do well. If your face doesn't fit so well, uh, then. You know, you're not so lucky, but I, I don't worry anymore. I, I've got a, a, a following of such, and who, who I do have is good. But as I say, due to work commitments and things, I'm cutting back on Facebook now. I just don't have the time to do as much as I'd like to, you know. But once once a week, yeah. I do it now, and maybe even once a fortnight, it's going to start happening. And that's me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I saw, the Be- I saw the Becca Ellers coming in there, and Gillian's in as well. Gillian Too Good. They're two of my greatest fans. Gillian is a. Uh, one of the admins now on uh, on my Memphis Smart Music, and as I say, and Rebecca is is uh, is all the way from the states. She's probably one of my my top followers, you know. So that's good to see them popping so in there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Julian is one of your admins. Yes, yes, because it was it was too it's too much uh, for for Stephanie to do the whole lot herself, you know. And and Gillian's kind of looking after me and things for maybe when I'm coming down to Wales. Uh, later in the year, I'm hoping to go to Porth Call uh, in September if it's on God sparing. And I was thinking about it. I'm not too sure though, but I'm thinking about coming down to Wales maybe March, April, May time and spending maybe a week down there and gigging for the week. Uh, so I'm looking into all those kind of things. But it's it's a driving. I don't know about you, yeah. Mark. Do, do you do a lot of driving? No, a lot of um, I'm still I'm still. Um... I'm still learning to drive. Um, Mallory oh, right. does um, my right. driving, so right. yeah. oh, still, even yeah. even in the passenger seat, it's still yeah. Oh, it's horrendous. You know, I mean, yeah. You know, I mean, I had, I had a gig uh, in Hug- Hugmanay on uh, New Year's Eve, and it was like mm. forty miles from where I stay. And there was two ways of going. There was the motorway all the way, uh, or another way. And I went the other way, and rather than going the motorway, and it was terrible. And Liz was driving, but it was stressful. But I do most of my own driving, and mm. Saturday night there I was gigging, and it was bad weather, lots of rain, poor visibility, cars coming towards you with the headlights, and uh, 70 miles an hour and things like that, you know, and you're, you're taking your, your, your life in your own hands, and I'm like, I need to get myself a driver, if I could, if I could afford one to do it for me, because mm-hmm. not only that, if you see if I go down to Wales, I mean, you can imagine from Scotland, it's a long, long journey, and uh, I'd need to stop halfway through say Birmingham somewhere and then drive the next day to get down there. But imagine having to drive all that way and then to go on stage and sing. Well I was about to say that. I can I can yeah. that's gonna be a very interesting thing to say how I 
handle that because mm -hmm. when you're in the passenger seat, you know, although you've got the long journey and everything, but it's reasonably stress free. You know, but yeah. you know, and if you're in the wrong frame of mind when you get to a venue, it can topple you over. Really, you know, you've got to be, oh, yeah. you've got to get into the zone. Yeah. So that's that's going to be quite interesting. Yeah. Well, see, the trouble yeah, is, yeah. Mister Memphis here, he was going to come down and have a pint with me, but this is what happened on the way down. I'll tell you what happened. Hang on, which yeah. one, me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Memphis right. Mark was going to meet me, and uh, you know, and he was going to come all the way down. Yeah, I was coming. I'm, I was going to come down. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But as I say, it never happened. Because you what said you were going to, you you said you were going to walk all the way or something. I don't know. He's got a video lined up, and it's going to involve some cheap laugh at somebody's expense. All right, what's well, on, expense. Steve? Right, roll, roll see. the, roll the tape. Okay, I will do. Here we go. Nothing, that's good. Yeah, yeah. He's having a rest. See? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's such see a long you... distance. I want to fly down. I, see if I'm coming down, then I'd like to just fly down and go to a venue that's got a sound system built in. But I'm just a bit wary of that because I've done gigs like that in the past. And you go to a, a venue and the sound system's built in and it's absolute rubbish, the sound system. And, and you, you go to sing and you just sound awful. You're just like, oh, jeez, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Um, right, know. Okay, let's go back to the questions. Um, yeah. Mark Memphis, this is for you. What's it like to gig... Oh. Um, what's it like to gig in a uh, working man's club these days? Um, I'm a local... Um, I work around Hampshire area, and I do a lot of Elvis tribute. But the trouble is... Um, I won't like to work in Bradford. They say Bradford is the worst place to work as it's rough in the working men's club. Is that right? No, that's complete um, rubbish, really, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, my experience of Bradford clubs, um, I think they're very, very good audiences. And if you're an Elvis tribute, I think you'd do probably quite well because they do seem to enjoy the older music. Um I would say the more difficult northern clubs where the audiences might not be quite as receptive tend to be down in South Yorkshire, um, like Sheffield and Doncaster. There's been a few nights where I've sh struggled almost to have a ripple of applause even, but that's how it is down there. Um, certainly up in West Yorkshire and even North Yorkshire, up towards York and everything, and Scarborough on, on, on the coast. Um, Great audiences. I I don't understand anybody saying that about um, Bradford audiences. I mean, it might be the case compared to um, Hampshire audiences, but um, no, I think there's far worse and far more difficult, you know, parts of Yorkshire really for for uh, for the uh, for the nervous, um, un what's it, un inexperienced singers perhaps that might find it a little difficult. Right, okay. No. Bradford's fine. Bradford's all okay. right. How about you, uh, Mark? Yeah. How about you? Uh, what's, it like, what's it like up in Scotland? Uh, you know, nine times out of ten, it's fine. You know, you get that odd occasional gig where you don't get a lot of applause and things. You just take that in your stride. You just kind of work the audience and, you know, and you do your best. I've sometimes went into clubs and doing a sound check and setting up and people coming up and saying, you're not the Elvis guy, are you? Oh, for goodness sakes, look at the state of you. And I'm like, <laughs> eh, no, I'm just the roadie. I'm just setting up. Elvis will be in later. And then you'd go in and do this, do the show. And then on my break, the guy who'd said that would come up and go, listen, I'm really sorry. And uh, you don't judge a book by its cover. You know, I mean, you might be pretty ugly, sis, but I mean, you've got a good voice on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there you go. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes, if I went to Scotland, yeah, they'll check me but out. But I would honestly say, if, I don't know an awful lot about England and the entertainment side of things, but from what I've seen, I think Elvis goes down a lot better in England than, than, than it does up in Scotland. 
You know what I mean? It's just yeah. not so, you know, acceptable up here for whatever reason. And uh, as okay. I say, I think it would be more successful in England. Okay. Um, Memphis, Mark, again, I've got a question for you. Yeah. This is from Deirdre. She's saying, do you ever wear a kilt, a kilt in any of your Facebook? <laughs> no, no. Because mm. like, like, like the same kind of idea with the jumpsuit, I, I don't have the legs for a kilt either. I've got like knobbly knees, you know. They're well hidden under my black trousers, but no, I've not got I've not got the legs for a kilt. No. Well, everybody's <laughs> asking if they could, if you could do it sometime. Wear a kilt. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, see my my live shows I do on Facebook. I, I, it's just from from the waist up. I don't usually show my legs or anything usually because it's just the dimensions of the room. I can't get the camera to zoom in in the background and have a full body shot. So oh, right. if I did wear the kill, you wouldn't see it, you know. So uh, yeah, because yeah. everybody know. wants to see you do the can can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, why not? Yeah, we'd have to pay for that. That would be a paying event, though. We'd have to, you know, put Facebook and be ticketed. So it'd probably be like maybe ten pounds a show or something, you know, for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of this Elvis? Here we go. What do I think? What's the What do you think of this person doing nail bits? All right. You know, by the front, uh, by the, yeah. we're, we're, uh, okay. Oh, I'll drop off. <laughs> what attracts me best is uh, I want to expose my talent because I, I love singing, really singing since I was a little boy. So I want to expose my talent and share my talent to the people. Here you go. What do you think about that? Mm. Yeah, that was super. Love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It just ridicules the Elvis legend. That's why people like myself and Mark doing this get affected by all that because people just ridicule you. They see, they think you're going to be like that, and it just tarnishes Elvis's mm. legacy. Really, you know. You know, if you can't yeah, sing, I say don't, why, don't do it. And that's why. That's why sometimes I get very annoyed. Do you know I'm not on Facebook now? I'm not on any of the Elvis's uh, Facebook groups. I used to be on it quite a lot, but they they took me off some of them. Right. Um, yeah, the admins because I, you know, I just went on there and just said the truth. I said, look, you know, why do it? You know, you're just kind yeah. of like, you know, if you're if you're going to sound like Elvis, fair enough. If you look like Elvis, fair enough. But yeah. please, if you can't see, mm. just go away. You know what I mean? Well, it's yeah. not just the. It, it, it's not just that. I mean, I did. I commemorated Elvis's birthday on Saturday night. I had um, a local gig in Bradford here, and I did forty-five minutes of my normal stuff, fifties and sixties. And I did for the first time in nearly ten years a complete Elvis show, forty-five minutes. There was no wig. There was no hair dye. There was no jumpsuit. Although I did put a gold lame-esque jacket on, although it wasn't lame. Um, and I just stood there and sang Elvis songs, did a little bit of moves and all the rest of it. But I didn't. I wasn't trying to be Elvis. And if I was going to sing Elvis again, that's what I do, similar to what you do, Mark. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. for me, like, you know, those people in that video you've just shown there, um, you can't take it seriously. And sadly... Most Elvis tributes, even the ones who might have more, slightly more expensive jumpsuits, but it's the wigs and it's every, and it just looks ridiculous. And as a fan of Elvis, I can see it now more than I did when I was an Elvis tribute. I couldn't see it back then. Um, 
but they're harming Elvis's legacy, and and they are people are ex, are expecting a joke. I think when mm-hmm. an Elvis, like a fun thing, this yeah. caricature. You know, why don't they complete the image and walk around with a burger in the hands or something? Why? Or, it's just ridiculous, and yeah. um, I, I find it insulting to Elvis's memory. I really do. And they, and that, yeah. You know, and, and, and I know we, me, you and I laugh about it sometimes, Steve, because it's it's a nice release, I suppose, for the frustration I feel. But it just it annoys me. It really yeah, does. Yeah. Yeah. The trouble is, so I'm a big Elvis fan, right? And I, I I love it. But the trouble is, sometimes I get really peed off, you know, about certain people, you know, who does Elvis, and I'm thinking, oh my god, just go back to your day job if you've got one. Mm. Because you know yeah. they are completely. I think I only go on about two sites now. You know, I go on, I go on um, Mark's site, and um, and I go on to um, oh, what's his name, Mark? Um, oh God, what's his name? Um, it's down my way where where I live, but and you know the trouble is, I, you know. For some reason, when I went on the, all the Elvis tribute pages, I'm thinking, oh, my God. And there's some new people coming in, too, and you're thinking, why? You know what I mean? But the trouble is, you can't knock them. You know, at no, the end of the day, if they're no. doing it entertaining, then good on no. them, but, you know. But... They're singing the Elvis songs in their own style as best as they can, you know, and that's all you can really ask for, I suppose, you know. But if you genuinely yeah. can't sing... You should say, well, I'm not going to do this, you know. And if you can hold a tune and you can sing a song, you can sing Elvis songs. You don't necessarily need to sound like Elvis, but if you can sing them and you've got a pleasant tone to your voice, then fair enough, that's good, you know what I mean? But some Mm. of these guys can't even sing and they come on and, you know, and I don't know about you, Mark, but I've always found you've either got the vocal or you've got the look. You've never ever found someone who's got the look and the vocal, you know. it's No, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's think, um, one or the other. Yeah. Do you think in pubs and clubs today, do you think Elvis tribute is getting more popular than any other artist, or do you think it's not? No, it's not. Definitely not in Scotland. It's a it's a dying no. industry in Scotland. It's. I mean, there's still, you know, there's still a market for it. As you know, I see Elvis um, tributes advertised all over the country. Um, at the moment, there seems to be this huge wave of Adele tributes appearing again. Yeah, that seems yeah. to be yeah, what yeah. I'm seeing everywhere at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I suppose up until quite recently, um, it was like Michael Jackson tributes, but that 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 got a little bit dodgy for a while, didn't it? Um, being a Michael Jackson tribute, there was all that stuff yeah. in the news. Yeah. I can't really think of anybody else in, in England. <clears throat> There's a lot of Freddie Mercury's as well, uh, Popping up, which I've noticed yeah. recently as well. But, There's like uh, Michael Bublé's as well. Michael Bublé seems to be quite good in Scotland. A lot of Michael Bublé tributes, uh, and no, that's they're, they're, and all that, you know. They, they'll all be uh, retiring now. You won't see them again for another ten months, eleven months. They'll be back at Christmas. <laughs> don't you worry. I love, I love that post you put up on your page about uh, coming out his cave. I thought that was hilarious. Oh, yeah, that, that that's <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, that, that's <laughs> that's what he does. <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> Michael Bublé. Michael Bublé, Bublé yeah, 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 yeah. Comes out of his cave at Christmas. I, I hear that Rolf Harris is making a comeback. All right. Yeah. right. Okay, you obviously uh, move in different circles than I do, Steve. Yeah. I think we should keep that <laughs> quiet, Steve, you know what I mean? We're, yeah. on, the, we're on national television now, aren't we? You know a, I mean? we're a family show. Yes. <laughs> mm. But anyway, yeah. what I'm trying to say, what you two, you make me laugh. But like, listen, put all jokes aside, right? Mm-hmm. What would you like to see in pubs and clubs today? Because, you know, some, you know, especially like changing rooms or because, you know, I've, I've seen some people get changing toilets. I get some people changing little cupboards. You know, I see, you know, Mr. Mark Memphis there, you know, you know, kind of like, you know, being in some worse places, you know, really bad places and everything. You know, what what do you think that clubs, 
you know, can help you more to to do? Well, I don't know about up in Scotland, but in the the uh, clubs that I do the rounds in, as far as clubs go, can't really ask for anything more. Um, you've got the stage and you've got a dressing room. Um, what a toilet? Uh, you, know, you sometimes have a toilet in that area as well, in the dressing room area. It's. Um, I would like to, um, if I could wave a magic wand, all of the pubs that put gigs on, there would be a designated performance area. Because um, there's nothing worse than being propped up in a corner where you've got to squeeze in between um, a fruit machine and um, a toilet door or something. And, you, and you've got people feet away from you and stuff like that. And and I'd also like a dressing room as well. Um, you know, I wouldn't be bothered if it was a cupboard, but a lot of pubs at the moment, you know, they, seem to, they just point you to the toilet, as Mark's already mentioned earlier on. Yeah. So that's the those are the only things that I would ask to be changed if I had a magic wand uh, for right. pubs. Tanya, Tanya just left me a question, and this is a good one. And tell the truth, guys. When you're doing gigs, do you get free drinks? Sometimes. Yeah. Not all the time. Sometimes. sometimes yeah. This depends yeah, on the yeah. on the venue. Yeah. There was one I was in a hotel one time, I was looking for a pint of soda water in line, uh, because I was driving. And she tried to charge me six pounds for a pint of soda water and lime. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I said, no, no way am I paying that for it, you know. But I would say it's 50 50. See, back in the day, years ago, back in the 80s and 90s, you were looked upon like, how can I say this? Like you were some sort of superstar. I'm not being trying to rub egos or anything, but they would treat you really well. You know what I mean? They would you'd walk into a venue that you you would be treated like royalty. You see nowadays that they, they don't have a lot of respect for entertainers like they used to. I don't know if it's just uh, up in Scotland, but that's how it is here. It's, okay. I think I think that's pretty much the same down here as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Have any of you done any caravan caravan sites? This is from Simon Walton. Have you ever no. looked at any caravan parks or anything? No. Well, I've I done um, a... Sorry. Oh, sorry, no, Matt, you're gone. No, that's, no, that's right. It's, it's okay. Well, I've, just said, I've done a couple. I've done two or three um, where, yeah. I've, where I've been booked to sing at um, a caravan park club or something like that, but not I've not done a residency or anything like that. Right, okay. But they're no different to, yeah. not different to any other club, really, you know. Yeah, okay. Still pretty much the yeah. same setup. Okay, Joanne says, I'd like to be a singer. How can I how can I be a singer and also how much do I make in that evening? <laughs> Go on, Mark, how, I'll let you uh Okay. How can you be a singer? <clears throat> I would probably say start off as a karaoke presenter. If you're depends at your age, if you're quite young, maybe in your early twenties, start off as a karaoke presenter, you know, get a bit of uh, kind of, you know, Character building work there, uh, build up your repertoire, songs, uh, and then if you want to take it further, maybe look into getting a vocal coach, uh, affordable, there's some affordable ones out there, and work on that and then try and approach some clubs and things. But to start off with, I don't know what, what you would get paid, but, you know, it's a, it's a learning process, I would think, you know. Mm. But the more, the more you improve, the more you get, basically, and... That kind of thing, you know. But if you're young in your early twenties, definitely become a karaoke presenter. Build up your your confidence, you know, your personality, your ability to talk to an audience. And when you've got that, and you're an average singer, you're 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 almost made, I would say, you know. But if you're a quiet person and just goes on to sing and doesn't engage with the audience, then you really wouldn't get too far. I don't think you have to engage with the audience and you know be a bit of a character. You know, which is part and parcel of the of the job. Yeah, I'd agree. I'd agree with that. Certainly, um, from the from the aspect of building your confidence, whatever, because it certainly isn't a job for the faint-hearted, um, mm -hmm. especially when you've got a gig when you're getting no applause, um, because that you know I can imagine that could be quite soul destroying for somebody, and you've also got to be quite thick-skinned. You're going to have not everybody's going to enjoy what you do. And you're always going to have some clever dick that will come up to you and tell you that you were you were rubbish or you um 
you didn't sing the songs that they wanted, you should do this and you should do that. Not only from the audience, but also from um, agents as well. Um, what I would, um, if you know, if you, if you've got the right temperament and the confidence to do it, um, what I would suggest is, I mean, the karaoke aspect, yes. Yeah, so see how you sound and get honest feedback from people. Get used to singing in in public, but then um, see if there's any showcases uh, which agents put on for um, usually for untrained singers, mm. and it's your opportunity to audition almost. Um, I've been to quite a few of them just to help out agents. Um, so I usually close the show, but you can always tell when it's somebody's first time on stage. Um, it is quite. It's sometimes it's as nerve wracking as what you think it is, but again, it's not. It's not something for the faint-hearted worry about having a great singing voice and being dynamic and everything after that i would say getting the confidence and the experience is more important really because you have to have that foundation yeah. okay i've got ruben uh, thank you for that i've got ruben here and she said all right um can you ask both marks what do they think about the x factor i'll let you answer that first mark what do you think um, well, I think the fact that it's been axed um, probably speaks for itself. Um, I mean, when Pop Idol first appeared, because that was the first, <clears throat> you know, that was the, that was the forerunner for X Factor. Um, I I really enjoyed that, and and probably more so because one of the, you know, one of the lads who was ended up he, he came second place was Gareth Gates was from Bradford, so we as a city got behind him. So it was quite a an involved thing, but it was quite because it was unique, and it was like we were choosing who was going to be this um, this star. But then, as it rolled on, and then as that um, it became the X Factor and all the rest of it, it just became diluted and the same old, same old. And I say, I think the fact that the fact that it's been axed speaks for itself. Really, people have just got sick of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've never liked um, it. I never watched talent shows or anything like that. I think. I mean, years ago, they never had all that X Factor and Pop Idol thing, you know. You just had a talent mm. and, and you went for it, you know. You didn't need television to boost you. I think it's just Simon Kill just trying to make money off people and, you know, uh, you know, just take advantage of them, you know. So mm. I, I've never liked it. I never watched them. Even The Voice, that voice, I don't even watch that either. It's just something that, I mean, it's me personally, I'm not interested in it. I'd, I'd rather, you know, I don't know, it's just not for me. Yeah, for me. And, um, last couple of questions what would you take um this um martin come on and he's asking uh, what would advice would you give me if i wanted to go into the music music industry um well presumably as a singer um be passionate about what you're doing and sing because you want to sing because um, you can always spot somebody who's just going through the motions. And I think it's more boring for the audience than it is for the actual performer to watch somebody like that. It's um, it's not all glamour. It's not all exciting. And, it, and you know, as Mark will probably um, be able to agree with, you're going to have some nights which are terrible and it's like the worst job in the world when you get those nights. Um, yeah. I think you've just got to really have a passion for for what you're doing um yeah. that's you know and apart from what we said earlier about you know building experience and confidence and what have you uh yeah and plus it also, also messes with your kind of sleeping pattern and all that you're you're up all night and you're sleeping all day kind of thing so you've got to watch that kind of thing you know uh because i don't know about you mark but if i finish a gig say at 12 o'clock or one o'clock i drive home maybe go home for about two I don't fall asleep to five, six in the morning sometimes, you know, so, yeah. and you, you know, yeah, sometimes you're, so wired. you're wired, you know, you're totally yeah. wired. So you've got to work other, in mental health. Yeah. I think yeah. the other thing you have to also be mindful of is that when you do enter this business, you're going to be working weekends and things like going out and going to people's birthday parties and all the rest of it. These are things that you sometimes have to push to one side because you've got a living to make. Um, mm. You don't, you know, you, you take it for granted that the weekend's here and you're going to be out and you're going to be pleasing yourself and enjoying yourself. And when you're in the entertainment business, 
people that's when people are going out and wanting to be entertained and you're not going to ha have the life that you think you're going to have you're not because you're going to be working so that's another thing to consider as well yeah you're probably like gonna you miss said, Ellie, yeah you've got to be thick-skinned as well because you can't you know you'll get a lot of rejection and things like that and if you can't mm. handle that then you, that's not the business for you you know you've got to really because it can get you quite depressed and down you know if you're just starting out and you're giving it your all and then somebody, like you say, comes up and tells you you're no good. I mean, you could just mm. walk away, take that to heart and become quite ill, you know, if, you, if you've not got the right temperament for it. Yeah. 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 That's true. Okay. Um, last question, guys. Julie's asking, um, I've, um, I'm a Dobby Parton tribute artist. The trouble is I'm just starting out, but the trouble is I've got problems with my pricing. Any advice? Um, as a Dolly Parton tribute, yeah. A pro well, i.e., is she how much charging? You know, how much you could have... Well, it, 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 you see, this is the awkward question, really, because it's not about um, being reluctant to divulge fees or anything like that. I mean, I'll be quite open about it. Where I live in Yorkshire, um, a direct booking from a pub or a or a club, um, if you were to charge hundred and fifty pounds for a Saturday night, um that seems to be more or less the going rate. There's going to be some pubs yeah, and clubs that will offer you more. There's going to be yeah. some that will try and get away with paying you 100. But I know that up yeah. in the North East, I know a singer that came down from the North East to work in Yorkshire. She lives in Yorkshire now. And she was absolutely staggered to find out she could earn £150 on a Saturday night. But it differs all over the country. So it's, you know, it would all depend on where this Dolly Parton tribute lived. Um, maybe just ask the question, how much are you willing to pay? And, um, and see what answer you get. It's up to them to decide whether or not they think um, they're worth more or, or what have you. It's a bit of a yeah. difficult thing, really. Mm. She said to me, she said, um, Hi, Steve. Um, I've been to Blackpool, did some acts in Blackpool, but they seem to be offering me 50, 80 quid just for one hour of singing. Um, <laughs> it's that genuine. You know, um, I think that's a bit... That's fair. That's quite. That's quite low. I mean, I I, I get more for that um, singing in a care home for an hour, and they, yeah. you know, and and you you do, you do those through the week. Um, they're not the best paid gigs, um, but you you do them anyway just to put a few extra quid in your pocket. But no, I'd I'd, I'd say that's a, and certainly for Blackpool, that's that sounds a bit a bit cheap. Yeah, but I know I know those uh, uh, chain of pubs in Blackpool, Mark Ellie's. Uh, they they yeah, pay the yeah. singers sixty sixty pounds. They pay for an hour, but what what they do is though that you, you you sing an hour in one pub, then you go to the next pub, and then you so you're singing about three or four pubs, you know. So you yeah. could be making you know two hundred forty pounds. I know it doesn't sound a lot, but for someone just starting out, it, it might be fine, you know, uh, yeah. because that's yeah. for a lot of singers. They don't actually drive; they've got mopeds, so they've got their laptop and their microphone and their little backpack and the moped. The 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 cycle on to the next pub and go in there do an hour and then cycle on and they do the four pubs in the one night yeah, that's well, yeah i mean that's pounds, what they you know? that's what they do in places like tenerife and what have you in blackpool yeah. they're not blackpool sorry Benidorm. Yeah, yeah. um yeah. but yeah. I, I was thinking more of that if you were actually turning up to a pub um to be yeah. the night's entertainment and you're taking gear yeah. and everything like that then yeah, that, yeah. that's that's uh, somebody's taking the oh, mick out well, of you for expecting you to well, do that for you've got to be very careful because i was very honest and i'm not i'm a, li a bit tougher now but when I started out when I was 19 I would go into, I went to a pub one time in Stirling I'll never forget it and I said to the girl well if you don't like me you don't need to pay me you know because I was that confident that you're going to like me and I'd done mm. my three hour set and I finished and then she came up she didn't really like you she says but I'll tell you what here's a tenner and I'm like <laughs> that's never you know never again you know what i mean but your dream lesson you learned know, there <laughs> yes definitely yeah i was thinking i was you know you're so confident and you believe that you not not a, not an ego uh thing you know but just basically you're confident in your own abilities and you know that people are going to enjoy it and you say well you know if you don't enjoy it you don't pay for it mm. and obviously they did because the whole audience thoroughly enjoyed it so you're just thinking that's great i've done a good night here and the owner of the bar comes up and says, well, I didn't really like you, you know, so you've got to watch. But that was back in the 80s, you know, I mean, yeah. things, you know, and there was a lot greener. And, I, you know, so you've just got to be careful when you're first starting out that, you you know, you don't go down the road I went down. <laughs> <laughs> well, Le sorry. A lesson definitely learned for sure. 
Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, yeah. guys. Thank you for coming on and uh, making my evening. I like. Um, I love it when you two come on. You always cheer. Yeah, well, we'll have to do it again, yeah, Mark, for, sometime. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. In fact, we yeah. need to do a gig. We need to do a gig together one time. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'll come down. If you're saying Bradford's all right, I mean, I'm really trusting you here. You're not winding up like 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 Steve oh, does. If Bradford's all right, Bradford's quite easy for for me to get to from Scotland. Mm -hmm. So as I say. I'll come down, maybe we do a wee couple of songs together or something and right. you know, have Steve have Steve in the audience having a few beers with his wife and they have a great time. How does that <laughs> sound, Steve? What, I'll tell you what, you won't never get me into Bradford. No? No, no. <laughs> something, something Bradford, Bradford took out an injunction mark um a few years right. ago. That's why you'll never get Steve in Bradford. No, no, oh, I right, right. <laughs> No, no, no. I used to be a Plymouth Argyle supporter, which I still am. And a few years ago, I had a bad experience up in Bradford. Okay. And I'm not going to tell you because you'd be taking the mick out of me all the time and I'm not going to do it. Right. All I can say is that I was arrested. Quite right. And that was it. Right. You turned your microphone off there. Yeah, he did. He I did, can, yeah. I can lip. Steve doesn't know this, but I'm a trained lip reader. Right. Okay. Right then. Go on. So he was arrested you... for urinating in a public place. Oh right. Oh well. Okay. What? Steve, can I just say something here? Yeah. I've got a reputation to keep, and I can't be seen to be mixing with interviewers. To act like that, you know what I mean? Yeah, me neither. So no, no, no. That's that's fine. You know, I don't mind that. But the trouble is, I was arrested not for urinating. I was arrested for fighting. So that for fighting. Was... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think and you I'm can sure. handle yourself quite well because you're. A... Yeah, I'd be scared to get involved in the fight with you. I don't. I don't think I would. I would survive. You know. No, it, it, it looks quite handy to me. Yeah, no, I think I, I think do, you I could do not be. like fight. I do not like fighting. But right. when somebody comes at you, uh huh, you got to stick up. Uh -huh. yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just let's hope we never upset you then, and we don't need to be in that position. Well, it's a long way to come and get you, mate, isn't it? If you're up, <laughs> oh, but you'd you'd probably do it though. You know, you'd be quite desperate, and you'd come up here looking for me and just try to sort you me out or something. A... You know. I'd, you can have a pit stop in Bradford, break the journey up. Yeah, <laughs> why not? Why not? Yeah, yeah. Steve, um, enough. Steve, can we end the show with a, a thought for the day? So I've got one. Go ahead, Ed. and it is to do with wigs. Right, go ahead. <laughs> they say that what goes up must come down. Right, and what goes on must come off. Right. And I think that's sound advice for anybody thinking of wearing a wig because they sound can advice. come off. It's a sound advice yeah. if anybody takes Viagra too. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is getting a bit too I'm I'm quite Surreal. a classy Scotty. Yeah, yeah. I'm too classy for this, Steve. Come on, I've got my reputation to think about. I'm gonna go on my show on Wednesday night, there'll be two people watching, you and Mark. The rest of away, you know. Well, <laughs> hey, you, 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 you get, you get a lot of people on your show, you mm, know. Yeah. Do Mark, Mark, honestly, that Mark, that meant plus Mark, you get loads of people on his show. I know he does. Okay. Yeah. You know, and, and guess what? And there's several people go on there like to spoil it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Just, That's the uh, beard guy. He comes on and gives me grief. Oh my goodness! I've got to watch him on my toes. You know, there's two that. things I do. See when, see when I'm, see when I'm singing on Facebook. I'm on tender hooks all the time, wondering mm. if Facebook is going to cut me because you that's get, why I don't do it no anymore. Reason. Yeah. So you're you're singing your way, and you look to the side of your eye to see if you're getting cut. And the other thing is, I check the comments to see if Steve Beard yeah. comes on. Oh no, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm. <laughs> when I first, when I first used to wind Mister Memphis up. I said, get chucked off by, by Stephanie, see? All right, okay. 
And I, I'll say to Stephanie now, I'll say, Stephanie, I love you, darling. You're not going to be off, are you? She said, you've got to behave yourself. I said, yeah. You know, and I go on there and one, one comment, if I make one bad comment, off yeah. I go. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, yeah. Even, I take, I, I, I speak to his, I speak to his missus on there. On there, I go, hello, how are you, darling? And I wind her up. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. do, you do, yes, you do, yeah. But I, I'm so thick skinned now. I'm just used to it, you know. What I mean, I don't, I don't bat an eyelid now with, with you, you know. What I mean, I just know you're, I know what you're like, but some people don't know what you're like, so you've got to be careful. And I'm the same way, Steve. See, I've got a sense of humor, very, very wicked and dry. And see, people don't know me, you know. What I mean, uh, basically, I can get myself into a lot of bother. Oh, it's happened in the past. Well, you you've know, got to You've got to have a laugh, you know. It's like, oh, yeah, it's like Mr. Mark Memphis there. He said that there's someone going to come and chop my head off one day. No, yeah. no, you upset a gangster. You I asked him one. live on television if he'd ever killed somebody or paid to have somebody killed. And he says, <laughs> What sort of effing questions that? And then you were, and you interviewed me afterwards and you were terrified. And I said, You might end up with a horse in your bed. <laughs> horse's oh, head yeah. Yeah, yeah you know oh, yeah. You, you, oh, you were yeah. you were dipping your toe into organized crime in, in the seedy world of gangsters steve no no mm. i don't give a gangsters i don't give a <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway guys guys thank you so much for coming on and uh, anytime steve so yeah much. welcome Funny. enjoyable I, I and, we'll, too, guys. Um, and we'll all we'll all do it again very soon look yeah, forward to it yeah Definitely. Yeah, we'll Scotland sometime, me and Mark, and we wear our kilts. Yes, and I might wear definitely. something else, Steve. Oh, you're going to wear a wig, are you? Mm, might do. I might wear a jumpsuit. Even <laughs> evil one. I've got mine still here. Steve, I've got one here in the cupboard I can lend you, so you can have that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You. To... I don't you're use it anymore, so... Sorry? I'm... I'm going to pour coal soon, so I might might borrow that jumpsuit and. The, and All the right, yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, I'm going to go this year. I'm, I'm going to go for the the festival in September for sure. Hopefully, so if you're down there, we'll certainly meet up and have a wee chat, and you can, you know, we can sort things out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring my brother with me, my air dryer. Well, why not? Yeah, yeah. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, and one of those garden yeah. blowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, don't see because you know what might happen. Uh -huh. There'll what? be one or two there that'll be um, wearing something that could, um, let's just say, there'll be flying fabrics in the sky if you've got your garden yeah. blower. Because there's one or two that do wear them. Yes. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. But yeah. I'm going to let you go because before yeah. Mr. Mark Memphis gets me into trouble, you know. He always okay. Does. Yeah, enough said. But, yeah. You take care, both of you. Yep. Okay. You Goodbye, Mark. Mark. Take care of yourself. Bye, Mark. You too, yeah. Take yeah, care, see guys. You see Steve. You soon. Okay. Take care. See you soon. See you later, baby. You know what, Crocodile? Uh, the, oh, yeah, the Memphises have left the building. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much. Are you brother and sister, are 